Hello everybody, this will be a video on negative Fibonacci levels and just kind of how to use them and incorporate them into your Fibonacci trading. Um, this is very useful tools, especially when you expect a continuation pattern um, in a uptrend or a continuation pattern uh, and a downtrend. And you can just kind of look for supports and resistances all in one kind of. And so what it's really doing is what we're doing is really adding to the Fibonacci retracement and just adding more levels to it. Um, and so really, I'm going to be using the one hour time frame. Usually the one to four hour time frame works pretty well with this, uh, especially in a trending market. Um, whereas if you use it on a large time frame, like a daily or a weekly, there might not be enough like uh, price action or price history to really uh, map out the levels or enough time for the levels to reach the levels, I guess, uh, if, it's, if that's not too confusing. And so really what you want to be using is the regular Fibonacci retracement. And we're going to be looking for a swing low to a swing high. <clears throat> And let's say that we can only see the current price right here. So I'm just going to turn on the replay mode. And again, we're just pulling the fib from a swing low to swing high and really looking for supports. And so there might be a probability we come down towards this 618 and then just kind of come up. And as we're coming up, what's nice about the negative levels now is that we can look for shorts. Uh, basically. And so again, the negative uh, 0 0.236, the negative 0 0.618, the negative one uh, work very well uh, with negatives. And then I do have the 1.618 just as a last resort of a level if we do end up kind of dumping down even more. But really, that's not really necessary. Again, the more necessary ones are these ones that you can see on my chart. So these three are pretty well respected, and I trade with them. Um, and they're pretty useful. So again, if we would have just hit the replay mode, or I'll just actually out, out of it, actually. And we'll go back to our example, if I can find it. So here it is. And you can see when we did draw that swing low to swing high, um, we didn't get the pullback to the support that we wanted. That's okay. That's why you need to use this with other TA and more levels. Um, but anyways, as we did continue up in the uptrend, local uptrend, we did get a small rejection off of the 236. Um, you can see right here, it's kind of dumped down from that. And then the 618 was pretty well respected, um, just lining it up. And right here, we did get a nice move. Um, again, when looking at these, you wanna treat these counter trades to an uptrend as scalps, and you should take profits uh, quickly. So you guys can get nice little one, two, 3% moves off the scalp. And sometimes you'll um, come across a whole new trend reversal just based off of the Fibonacci levels. And so again, the 236 and the 618 work very well uh, when using these. And so this is an example of an uptrend when looking so for supports. I'll show you guys an example of a downtrend in which it shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, and so I'm gonna just go back to replay mode and we're gonna go right here. So. Again, we're identifying a swing high. Let me turn on my magnet tool to help me. So we go from the swing high. I like to use wick to wick to be persistent. And I've noticed it works best with that compared to body to body of a candle. And so I ah, can't really get it right now. But anyways, we're going to go again from the swing high to the swing low. And we're just looking for pivot points. Again, if I turn on the line tool, you can see there was a pivot point, a change in direction to another pivot point, another change in direction. So if I turn them back on the regular candles again, here you can see you get your normal uh, Fibonacci 
uh, retracement. So there could be a possibility that price will come up and then reject. And then possibly you can look for kind of local scalp uh, longs in this case of each level of these. So the two, three, six could get a bounce off of that. The six, one, eight and the one to one. I noticed that the 236 and the 618, especially the 618 on the way down, are very well respected levels. And again, um, I would use these with Confluence and other TA and not just these levels alone. Um, again, they're just a nice way of looking for longs and shorts uh, all from one fit pull. So. So what it really is, is just adding more numbers to a Fibonacci and just doing TA off of them. Um, and they can be used as like extra confluence with uh, other TA levels. And so to kind of just all wrap it all up, I'll share with you my Fib retracement numbers. Feel free to pause the video right now and just kind of jot all of these down. Um, color code them if you want to. Um, and again, I like to save them in a template. My template is simply called negative Fibonacci levels. And so they're pretty handy to have. Um, and again, I'll have all of my Fibonacci uh, levels just in a separate templates to help me stay more organized and just kind of use them when necessary in the basic market conditions. And so again, just to go over everything on negative Fibonacci levels. Again, just to use them along with our regular Fibonacci levels. And you want to use them when looking for a continuation pattern. So for this example, again, we're expecting continuation to a downside with a local resistance possibly. And again, you guys can use these negative Fib levels as confluence for looking for scalps uh, counter Intuitive to the trend. And so again, I'll leave this in a playlist called advanced trading. I'll be adding to that playlist uh, over time. So feel free to check out my other videos in there and then like and subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to leave any questions down below in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, so thanks. Bye. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye.